Today marks 11 years since a day that changed Colorado forever. 13 souls lost in the Aurora theater shooting. 70 people were hurt. 9 News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us live from the 720 Memorial in Aurora this morning. And Courtney, this is where a lot of people gather overnight there to pay their respects. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Jordan and Corey. They have this midnight vigil every year with survivors and family members of the people that were killed. You can see these 12 white crosses here represent the 12 lives lost and one unborn child. Each year, the community is invited to reflect and remember the tragedy that unfolded more than a decade ago. It's a solemn evening with a candlelight procession and speeches from survivors and loved ones. Heather Dearman helps to organize each year's annual events. She lost her six year old son or six year old second cousin, Veronica Moser. I would like to also acknowledge all of those who were there that night in the theater who were not physically injured, but they carry wounds with them that are unseen. Some of them are here today and we see you. You can remember the victims this weekend with a series of events organized by the 720 Memorial Foundation. On Saturday, they'll hold their annual Reflection Garden on Tap fundraiser in 5K. The Hero's Journey 5K is organized by Zach Goldich, who's a graduate of Gateway High School, a former NFL player, current South Metro firefighter, and a survivor of the shooting. The money raised uh, at the beer fundraiser that they have this weekend on Saturday all goes to the 720 Memorial Foundation, among the many other things that they do uh, that money will be used to help advocate for the long-term needs of survivors. Corey, Jordan. And Zach's going to be joining us over on Channel 20 to talk more about his second annual 5K fundraiser as well. Corny, thank you. Now, we can't forget the first responders who saved countless lives that night in Aurora. And after that night, the investigators who helped get justice for those families. For the first time, the sergeant with Aurora Police, who was responsible for supervising that massive investigation, is sharing his story. Matthew Files remembers waking up that call 11 years ago. He led the police department's major crimes unit for just six months before taking on the biggest case of his career. File supervised the investigation all the way through the trial, and he says he can't forget the ones who suffered most, the families of the 12 people and the unborn baby killed, and the ones who seriously were hurt. But for the living victims that have to change the entirety of the, their lives, uh, their relationships that they've had to that point, and all the relationships that they have in the future are different. That was the hardest thing. Files also talked about the stories that no one heard about during trial because there was just so much evidence. 200,000 pages of discovery. He says that one officer transported a woman who was pregnant at the time to the hospital. The couple named their baby after that officer. We know days like this, of course, can be difficult, but we do want to re uh, remind you that there is always help available 24 seven for anyone who may be struggling with their mental health. Colorado Crisis Services has counselors available around the clock. You can call or text the number that's listed on your screen right now. That is 1-844-493-8255. You can also dial 988 to be connected to the National Suicide Lifeline. It's 605 right now and the drunk driver who crashed head on into a car full of high school students killing two will spend decades in prison. A judge sentenced Ricky Avalos Trujillo to 31 years in prison. The crash happened last August. Four 17 year olds from Castleview High School were driving down frontage road off of I-25 just after midnight. Investigators say Avalos Trujillo was drunk, high and speeding in the wrong lane. He crashed into the teen's car. Two of the teenagers, Colton Bellamy and Audrey Todd, died. The others were badly hurt. Investigators say Avalos Trujillo had been convicted of DUI twice before. Back in May, a jury convicted him on multiple counts of vehicular homicide, vehicular assault, DUI, and careless driving. It has been three weeks since the Supreme Court ruled creative businesses can discriminate against LGBTQ plus customers. Now, the cake baker at the center of a similar case wants in. Jack Phillips and his attorneys are asking the state Supreme Court to overturn an old decision. It found Phillips violated anti-discrimination laws when he refused to bake a cake celebrating someone's transition. He's represented by the same group that brought the case about the LGBTQ plus wedding websites to the Supreme Court. The court's conservative majority ruled people who run expressive businesses like that don't have to create messages they don't agree with. Back in 2018, a less conservative Supreme Court gave Phillips a partial victory, but the ruling was too narrow to impact other businesses. 
Another day, another strike looming, and this one could directly impact us in Colorado. About 2,000 XL workers could strike next month if they don't reach a deal. The local IBEW represents electrical workers in Colorado and Wyoming. Their contract with XL expires at the end of the month. Union reps say XL is offering a 13% raise over three years, but it's not enough to keep up with the cost of living. The union also wants XL to share more details about the company's shift away from coal. The two sides have come together gather to bargain. Excel told us they're still negotiating. UPS is going to start negotiating with his workers once again. This will be the first time the two sides have met since the 4th of July weekend. The biggest sticking point is pay. Now UPS says it is ready to up its offer. Thousands of workers have already been holding practice pickets to show UPS what might happen if they don't reach a deal fast. Their contract runs out July 31st, so about a week and a half from now. And Broadway cast and crews could go on strike as soon as tomorrow. Stagehands, hair and makeup artists and others working on Broadway and touring shows are voting today on whether to strike. They're still negotiating health care benefits, pay and housing for touring crews. They represent 45 shows on Broadway and across the country. Today is the Pac-12 Media Day in Las Vegas and CU's new coach will not be there. Deion Sanders has to miss it due to a routine follow-up procedure after having surgery last month to remove blood clots in his legs. CU expects Coach Prime to be ready for fall camp and the Buffs season opener in September. His son Shador, the Buffs starting quarterback, will be one of the team's reps at Media Day alongside teammate Travis Hunter and defensive coordinator Charles Kelly. And one thing you want to know about the weather today are the stats going for a high of just 79 degrees. That compares to a normal high of 91, so we'll be cool today. 105 is the record high. That is not only the warmest for the month, but the warmest ever recorded in the city of Denver. 43, the record low, 1897.